Hi everyone, um, welcome to another video and today I am in my little, my little sanctuary in my home. The, this is the room that I kind of fixed up during COVID so that I would have a little uh, a space where I could create and write and journal and meditate and stuff like that. So um, sometimes people write in to me and they say they don't know how to meditate or they find it really hard to meditate. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a good meditator either, but I found something, I found journaling to be amazing for me and that's my form of meditation. I love journaling. I didn't know I would love it so much until I started doing it. And so in the beginning, I didn't know how to journal and then I don't know how, I just got this idea that if I just have um, a series of questions that I answer on a daily basis, that becomes the spine or the backbone, the backbone of my journal. And so that's what I started doing. And all I had to do was, you know, just like with meditation, what I did was I made a commitment that I would sit down just 20 minutes a day with my journal. But if it went on longer, that was, that was fine. But I just had to earmark 20 minutes of my day. So I had no excuse to say, oh, I don't have time, I'm too busy. Because if I'm too busy to take out 20 minutes a day for me to do something that's going to help me and uplift me um, and move me forward, if, I'm, if I don't have time to take out 20 minutes a day, then there's something wrong with my life. Then it means I'm not caring about myself enough. So if you want to learn how to, how to journal effectively, that's what I want to share with you today. If you meditate as well, that's great. Um, I have lots of things I do to uplift myself nowadays, including going out in nature and so on. But journaling is really high among them, and it's something that I've discovered only recently for myself and have been just telling all my friends about how effective it's been for me. Um, so what happened, so what I did was I just had this idea one day that let me try journaling and see how it works and just spend 20 minutes writing and answering these few basic things. And one of those basic things is where is my energy level at today out of 100? And so, um, and, and I started journaling on a day where I was feeling particularly tired. So it was really, so it was a really low number that I put down. And when I told Danny, because I just put three out of 100, and he goes, you're not a three out of 100. If you were three out of 100, you'd be lying in bed. You're up and about and you're doing stuff. And I said, yeah, I know, but I, I want to aspire to 100 out of 100. So let me just put three out of 100. And so he was rolling his eyes at me, but it made me happy to put three because it gave me lots of room to grow. But you can put whatever it is you feel out of 100 of where you think your energy is at on that day. But then the next question that I asked myself is, why is my energy so low right now? And then I just went silent for a moment and, saw, and just watched what came into my mind when I posed that question. And immediately there were a flood of thoughts. You see, so this is why I call this my meditation. Um, so the thoughts that came in was, wow, you were up till late last night. Oh, wow, you've been eating some pretty junky stuff. Or, hey, you, you were doing stuff yesterday or earlier today, which you really didn't want to do, but you weren't able to say no. Why weren't you able to say no? So these thoughts come in. So I quickly started writing, and I was writing, this is why my energy is so low. And then the next question I ask myself is, how can I increase my energy? Uh, and then, and so then I will write things like, oh, I can go out in nature, I can do this, I can do this. But I found that just the act of journaling helped my energy to shift. It just helped it to shift. Because when you feel low energy, what is it? It's stuck energy. Stuff is stuck. But when you um, acknowledge it and you become aware of what it is that's causing your energy to be stuck, it already starts to shift it. That's what I started to find. Other things that shift my energy are things like exercise, movement. Um, what I find for me 
what works is that I do what's called what I call yin exercises. I like yin exercises more than yang exercises. So what's the difference between yin exercises and yang exercises? Yin exercises is more like um, walking, but at a comfortable pace, not power walking, not running, not jogging, not sprinting, but walking at a comfortable pace. Pilates, stretching, yoga, um, those are all yin exercises. Tai Chi, Qi Gong, breathing. You're, you're stretching, you're moving your lymph um, through your body. Um, you are activating the sympathetic as opposed to the parasympathetic. What is the sympathetic? Uh, the sympathetic is your relaxation um, response, whereas parasympathetic is your stress response. So what are yang exercises, which for me, I'm not attracted to them, but they're great for some people. Uh, the yang exercises are things like jogging, running, uh, weightlifting, working out in a gym like rigorously till you work up a really big sweat, things like that. Those are what I call yang exercises. So for me, yin exercises suit me. And I like to have a whole list of them handy so that I can turn to any one of them. And so in my journal, I will also, uh, I will also report to myself. Did I exercise today? Yes, no. If the answer is no, why did I not exercise? What did I use that time for instead? What this journal reveals to me as I look back on it, it reveals to me as to whether I am actually caring for myself or have I been neglecting myself? Have I been saying yes to things that I don't want to do? Have I been doing things out of obligation? It reveals so much that it is, it, it's, it's quite a revelation and an eye opener. And now I am addicted to my journaling. And if nothing comes, I start doodling in my journal and then suddenly I'll start writing. And now I find that 20 minutes isn't enough for me. So basically you just have to commit to 20 minutes, but when you get into it, you might find you want to keep going. What I found is I'm in a place where I look forward to it. Look, I don't know if you can hear the chimes behind me, but they are agreeing with me. They are like, yes, yes, yes. Um, so I, I keep going now for 30, 40 minutes, and I love doodling in my journal book as well. Uh, and, and I can even share with you some of the qu types of questions I ask myself. But just to give you a glance of my journal, you can see here, I've been going at it for a couple of months and I love doing it now. You can see that I use colors. I even bought a set of gel pens and I put stickers and I doodle. I did a dragonfly here. I actually drew a monarch butterfly in here. I drew a monarch butterfly here. So I just, uh, I just liven it up so that it's colorful. Um, and, uh, and I've got a couple of stickers of unicorns that I just put in there. And I use different colored pens uh, because it makes me happy to do that. Um, oh, and if you have any questions about this, please post your questions and Abby will read them out to me. But right at the back page, what I've done is I have actually listed all the things that I want to put into the journal. This is what makes it easier because people say, I don't know what to write in my journal. But if you have a checklist of things to enter into your journal, that makes it so much easier. And because of this checklist, I get really happy and anxious to go in every day to do that. So first I'll tell you my checklist and then I'll tell you what's kind of happened as a result of my journaling. Um, so the checklist is that so first of all, what I've written here is this journal is to aid me in unraveling my purpose. So in other words, even though I know my purpose, it helps me stay on my purpose so that it becomes realized. It helps me to gain clarity and it helps me to regain my energy and maintain it in the 90s and high 90s to 100. That's what this journal does. It helps me to do those things. And so with the kinds of things that I journal on are energy for the day. That means battery percentage for the day, kind of like a smartphone. I, I gauge myself when I wake up in the morning, where's my battery at? 
Now, if the battery is low, what this tells me is I have to spend the day recharging my battery. If I didn't have the journal and if I didn't write 3% that day, I would not have spent the day charging my battery. I would have spent the day doing, doing, doing more stuff and getting down to zero and then getting sick or something. So the journal helps me to see, oh, I'm at 3%. OK, today is a day to focus on self-care and recharging. Um, the journal has helped me realize that every day is self-care day because as long as I've taken care of myself, then I automatically feel this urge to share, to share with my audience, to share and to create, to create more content um, and, to, uh, and to be out there to share more knowledge and everything I know. So, so basically what, I, what this journal has helped me to realize is the more I take care of myself, the more I create content to share with all of you. So every day needs to be self-care day because the result of self-care is that I have more, uh, more content and more energy to share with everyone else. Um, the other thing that the journal, the other thing I ask myself each day is, what is it that has stressed me? What, says, what is it that has drained me? What have I been doing in the last couple of days that has drained me if my battery is low? I also journal, what is it that has uplifted me and charged me? So if the following day my energy has shot up, I will actually write down what it is I did so that when I look back, it's like, oh, wow, look, when I did this, my energy went up and I can see the patterns. Um, the other thing I do is I uh, the ask myself is, have I had any insights and aha moments today or yesterday that I can write about? Um, have I received any messages from the other side? And I write those down as well. What am I grateful for? I write my gratitudes. Um, and then the other thing I do is that every day, this is something I do, is I love to send love to everybody. And if there are any people in particular that stand out, either on Facebook, if I notice a comment of someone suffering, or in my sanctuary, if I've noticed that someone needs extra healing, I will write their names down and say, and, and, and under like who needs extra healing and love sent to them and I'll write these names down as a reminder to send them extra healing and love. Um, and also what I ask myself is, is there anything that has um, stressed me out today generally in the world? And so what I do is I flip the focus. So I ask myself, if I flip the focus and look at the world, from the view from above, the view from the other realm, what do I see? So I remind myself to do that and I write it in my journal. For example, if a lot of the stuff that's happening around COVID or vaccines or whatever it is, is starting to make me feel stressed out because that's what everybody is talking about or arguing about or whatever, um, I will immediately remind myself, okay, what is the view from the other realm? The view from the other realm is that we are being called to actually come together. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to heal. COVID itself was an opportunity to reboot everything. That is so, so basically the journal, um, when I ask myself in the journal, what is the view from above of this situation that seems to be stressing you and everyone else uh, um, out? And I, I'm able to go into that view from above and write about it, what it is I see. And it immediately calms me and it allows me to get into that space of helping to calm the energy of the world and calling on other people. Then I'll know, okay, in my next video, I'm gonna call on everybody to help me calm the energies of the world because when we do it together, it's, uh, the, uh, our energy, it, it actually works exponentially. So the journal helps me to do all these things because I'm writing about it all the time. Um, the other thing that I do is uh, in the journal is I remind myself to exercise and to breathe, to breathe deeply and to slow down my breathing. Um, if you are going through any physical challenges, if you have a physical ailment, here's a huge area where the journal can help you. 
you can talk to your physical challenge. You can talk to your body, and then you can just listen for a few moments. You can actually have the journal open in front of you with a pen in your hand, close your eyes, and talk to whatever area of your body is bothering you at that moment. So um, somebody I know, um, and I don't think she knows that I'm doing this, but uh, beautiful Rita, we call her Rita Peter, who was one of the moderators of my Facebook group. She is, I know she has had surgery recently, um, and, and I hope she doesn't mind I'm doing this. So this is a shout out to you, Rita. I would love for you to sit with a pen and paper or a journal and to ask your kidney, what is the message that it has for you? And then just allow your hand to write whatever comes through you. So this is the kind of thing, like when I'm sending love and energy to Rita because I know what she's going through, immediately I'll get this message that, oh, I need to tell her to do this. So my suggestion to all of you who are going through any physical challenges would be to, uh, to talk to your physical challenge and do it with a pen and a journal and just write whatever it says, whatever comes through. And you would be surprised because I have done it when I'm tired. I have done it when I might be going through some physical thing. And immediately it will tell me. It'll even tell me, I don't need meds. I don't need anything. It's my body just saying, please rest. Please stop saying yes to so many commitments. That's all it is. You don't even need supplements. It's not even the food. It literally is rest. Just rest. Just love yourself enough to take a break and take time off. Love yourself enough to say no to the people who want a piece of you. Literally, that could be what comes out, and I'm scribbling it really fast, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, surely I can do that. And usually the answer is very simple but not always easy for the person to do because it's like, oh, how do I say no to this person? I've got this commitment. I already committed to that. So those are the challenges, but that's where you have to step up and love yourself and do those things for yourself. But the journal is what has been really helping me because it's been helping me see the patterns. Um, they, and so basically, uh, the journal has helped me to stay on track with the work I do, with the sanctuary I have, with the event I'm going to be doing. I'm going to start doing events again as of December, which I'm super excited about. My first one is going to be in Sedona. Many of you already know. I've, uh, I've selected Sedona because the vibe there is so high. And what I want to do at this event is that I want to help people. I want to help people to recognize and understand and know what it means to be in a high vibe energy. So that's why in this Sedona event, we're going to create an atmosphere. So as it is, the, the venue, the, 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 the place, Sedona, is going to help us. But we're going to create an atmosphere where everybody in the room is going to get tools on raising their vibe. And so as we do it all together, it's going to increase the vibe exponentially. One of the things I believe is that the reason why many of us struggle and suffer is because we don't know how to raise our vibe. That's why I'm sharing about the, jour the journal. The journal will help you as you identify tools, as you identify how to, um, how to raise your vibe, like whether it's through exercise, whether it's through um, earthing yourself or whatever it is, or listening to music. The journal will be your way of reminding you to do it every day. So one of the things we will be doing, even in Sedona, is we will be learning to do some deep journaling. We will take some deep journeys together. But as I was saying, one of the reasons why people struggle in their lives is because um, as a culture, as a race, we are not taught what it means to raise our energy. We are not taught what it means to be of high energy. We are not taught um, what it means to be healthy, what it means to be fulfilled. Everything we are taught, everything we learn, whether it's uh, at school, whether it is through uh, healing health programs and all this, everything is targeted at pain avoidance. 
So what is it that we learn? We learn what it is to be sick. We learn what it is to feel pain. We learn what it is to struggle. And, uh, but what we don't learn and what we don't get is an immersive experience of what it feels like to be filled with energy, to be healthy and whole. And that is what I want to try, what I want to create. Um, that is my aim, that is my goal, that is my goal for my events. That is what is my goal because it will be an immersive retreat, four days, where I will be with you all four days, but you will also break out into groups so that you can actually interact with each other because you will actually have exercises to do which will uncover your blockages. We will be using music that has been purposefully composed and designed by musicians like Barry Goldstein who writes healing music. Um, and this music will be to elicit higher and higher states of being. And so you will actually get a glimpse of what it feels like. Um, I will be taking you on a deep journey as though you will be experiencing your own near-death experience so that you can realize the blockages that have been holding you back, the blockages that have been preventing you from healing. You will also learn that uh, as an empath or a sensitive person, how being an empath has held you back from fully living your life and how to now use it as a superpower. You will learn how being an empath has impacted your health. So, um, so this workshop is for empaths, super sensitive people, whether you are going through a health challenge or not, or a relationship challenge or an abundance challenge, it'll help you on every level. Um, and so I truly believe that if people knew what it felt like to be fully whole, they would know what to strive for. It's because our culture is so focused on, on the stress. It's so focused on the fear. It's so focused on the illness. It's so focused on making people fear the illness that we don't know what it feels like to operate at full energy. And that's my hope, is for you to experience it so that you know what it is that you are looking to create. How can you create something if you don't know what it is that you're trying to create? See, and I had that experience in my near-death experience, but I know that you do not need to die to experience that, which is why I share it with such passion. I know it's because most of the things that surround you in your, in your marinade, most of the things in your marinade um, make you feel drained and depleted and less than perfect. So what you need is a marinade that uplifts you and allows you to know that, oh, this is how it should be. This is what I came here in this planet to experience. And when you're in that marinade and when you're at that level of energy, what happens is you suddenly become more intuitive. You suddenly get more insights. You suddenly become more awakened. You suddenly feel like, oh, this is what I'm meant to do. This is my purpose. This is my passion, blah, blah, blah. It all starts to make sense to you. And you need to be in the right environment for it all to flow and for it all to fall into place for you. And then you go and live your own life being who you are. But what we will also do um, at, my, uh, at my retreat is we will equip you so that you have the tools to continue living from that space, from that high energy, high vibe, purpose-filled space when you go back into your life. Because one of the mistakes that people make, particularly if you are sensitive or an empath, is that you go back to your old life and you go back to being the person you used to be because that's what everyone around you is used to. You are going to get the tools to help you because we're going to create a network of people, of friends. You're not going to leave there alone. You're going to have a network of people online to connect with to help you stay in that space. Because what happens is when you go back to being the person that you used to be because you're afraid the people around you won't accept you, here's what you're actually doing. 
you are underestimating the ability of the people around you to step up to where you are now. You're not giving them that opportunity. And that's not only not fair to them, it's also not fair to you. It's not fair to you to go back to the person that you didn't want to be. And it's not fair to them that you don't believe they can step up and love you for who you really are and not who you think you should be to please them. So now, Abby, do we have any comments or questions? Okay, um, sure. So if you, um, if, if there's any that you want me to just even say, tell them that I have done videos on, or if you want to give a shout out to any names there, I'll be happy to do that. Oh yeah, yes, my last few videos have covered all that in great detail. Right now, even journaling recharges my batteries. Um, um, exercising, yin exercises, breathing, stretching recharges my batteries. Uh, going out in nature recharges my batteries. All of these things. And I just have to make time to do them. And we have to um, love ourselves enough. And here's another thing that you can put in your journal. You can ask yourself this question. What would I be doing if I did love myself? So ask yourself that every day and then ask yourself, Okay, why am I not doing this? If you're finding you're not doing this, that will actually help you to love yourself more. I actually believe that even if you're going through an illness, you could actually heal yourself through journaling. You could even do like a 100 days to 100% battery or 100% energy through journaling. That's something I hope to develop one day as well. Um, so, so, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, yes. Sorry, info about the Sedona retreats. It is from December 2nd to December 5th. It's a four-day retreat in Sedona. I'm going to put in the link. Um, my host is Elan Cohen. His company is Shaloa Productions. It is on my website. Plus, I'm going to put a link into this, into this video and uh, in the comments below. And also, um, if you Google it, Anita Murjani, Sedona, Shaloa Productions, it'll come up. So it's a four-day retreat, immersive, and all the information is there. Uh, it'll be in the link that we're going to include. So mark that in your calendar, December 2nd to the 5th. That's four days, four full days. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love you guys, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Even if not in Sedona, I look forward to seeing you here on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, social media. Please, um, please click like if you liked this video. Please click subscribe if you haven't subscribed or follow, depending on what platform you're on. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you so much.